is lesson 7.7, .7, factoring special products. You should be on page 398. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to factor the difference of two squares. You're going to learn how to factor perfect square trinomials. And then you're going to use these techniques to factor to solve a real life problem. I think it's important to emphasize right now, when they say special, these are unique circumstances that have some shortcuts where you could avoid using all the steps of the last two lessons and get these factored in a more efficient way if it's a special situation. So we'll talk about those two special situations now. The first one is called factoring the difference of two squares. So let's make sure we completely understand what these words are saying. Factoring means we could take this and write it in this way, you know, two binomials factored. Difference, okay, difference is a subtraction. So this is saying if I have a subtraction of two perfect squares, there's a shortcut, okay? When they say squares, they're talking perfect squares. So here's how this shortcut works. Look at the sample question. I, I highlighted it, and I'm going to have it over here. Do you notice how this is a subtraction? Do you notice how these are both perfect squares? Isn't x times itself x squared? And is it 5 times itself 25? Whenever you have two perfect squares being subtracted, the factoring is really easy. The uh, x and 5 are the factors. You would just write x plus 5, x minus 5. Okay? You just take x and 5 and write them down twice and make one of them addition and one subtraction, and there's your answer. Okay? That's how you factor that. That's the shortcut. Look at b. 4z squared minus 1. Do you notice how it's a difference, a subtraction of perfect squares? Okay? 2z times itself gets you 4z squared, and 1 times 1 is 1. So this is a difference of perfect squares. So to factor it, you make one of them plus, one of them minus, and you put the 2z and the 1 here and the 2z and the 1 there. There's your factoring. Okay? Now, if you for some reason forget this technique, you could still do this, but it's just going to take you longer. So let's take this first sample. You have x squared plus, you notice no x's in the middle, minus 25. You would have to figure out what times what's negative 25, but adds up to zero. Well, let's think. Does it? Negative 5 times 5 give me negative 25, and negative 5 plus 5 give me 0. Well, my factors are there, which means I would have this, which is getting you the same answer I had. It's just going to take you longer to think through the situation than it might if you can just see, hey, if I'm subtracting perfect squares, I have a shortcut. You can use this to do some basic mental math as well, okay, without a calculator. So here you see a subtraction of perfect squares. So based on what we just learned, okay, I could rewrite this. I could rewrite this as 54 plus 48, 54 minus 48, okay. Well, 54 plus 48 is 102 and 54 minus 48 is 6. So the answer to this statement should be 102 times 6. Well, that's easy enough. 100 times 6 is 600, and 2 times 6 is 12. This is 612. So I could take something more complex and without a calculator by using this difference of squares pattern, actually calculate it without the help of my calculator. Why don't you pause the video and try to factor each of these polynomials and special products using the difference of squares pattern. Go ahead and do that. I highlighted the responses to each. Um, be careful in number two. It's easy to write that, but remember, when you write polynomials, you want to write them in descending order of degree. And if you write it like this, I wouldn't give you a zero for it, but you did not write it in descending order of degree. 
we would have to factor the negative out here and rearrange this. This would actually be an A answer, okay? I'd give that a C answer. If you want an A, you'd have to have that. If you have questions on the rest, make sure you ask in class. I try to show a little bit here. It's just using the difference of squares pattern on each. There is one other unique pattern that you might come across. It's called the perfect square trinomial pattern. So again, when you read the word factoring, factoring means we're going to take that statement and we're going to factor. We're going to create two binomials. Perfect square, okay? They're saying if you look and you see that the first term and the last term are perfect squares, there could be a shortcut. So let's check. Is n squared a perfect square? And I'm thinking, yeah, n times n gets me n squared, so I'm just going to put an n here. And 16 is a perfect square. Four, and four times four is 16. Now, look at the middle term. If you can multiply these together and then double and get that, it's a perfect square trinomial pattern. So let's check. Um, 4 times n is 4n, and if I double 4n, I get 8n, which is the middle. So here's the answer to this. You take n and 4, and there's your correct factoring. So we shouldn't write it this way. We ought to write n plus 4 to the second power. I have two factors of n plus 4, and that's what you can see here. Okay. Let's try this one. This is a perfect square trinomial pattern. Look, 2x times itself gets you 4x squared. 3 times itself gives you 9. Now multiply those two together, you get 6x. If you double 6x, do you get 12x? And yes, you do. Now, some of you might be like, well, there's a negative in front. That's okay, I'll get to that in a minute. So to write this out, I would write 2x and 3, 2x and 3. Now, you remember in the last problem, we had a positive here, so I had positives. Here I have a negative, so put minuses. So the answer to this factored is 2x minus 3 to the second power. Okay? These are perfect square trinomial patterns. Now, these little shortcuts only work, let me color code, if you look here and here, the A and C values must both be perfect squares for this to work. If, if they are not perfect squares, then you're going to have to use the Brooklyn method from the last lesson. Let's look at one more. Now, when I, when I, was, I prepared for my video, they decided to multiply each side by 9. Like, I wouldn't have done that for this reason. Look carefully. That's a perfect square, x times itself. One-ninth is a perfect square. Think about it. One-third times one-third is one-ninth. And now let's check. If I multiply these together and then I double it, one-third x doubled is two-thirds x which you see in the middle. So the correct factoring here is to take x and one-third and write x plus one-third, x plus one-third, which means I have x plus one-third squared. And this equals zero. Well, to solve this, this has to work out to zero, which means x would have to be negative one-third because negative one-third plus one-third is zero. So there's my answer, okay? What I'd like you to do is try these six questions for yourself. So the first three are going to just ask you to factor. The second, you need to factor and then solve. So pause the video and try those. And again, I'm back. So questions 9, 10, and 11 are all perfect square trinomials. Now, number 11, I should show a little bit more work. You've got to be careful. Do you notice in number 11, let me color code, that before we start factoring, that all of these have a common factor. I can definitely divide all those by 9, so I should do that. So let me factor out the 9. So if I divide everything by 9, I get z squared plus 4z plus 4. Now here's the next thing. Aren't those both perfect squares? And yeah, they are. 
z times itself gets you z squared, and 2 times itself gives you 4. Now, if you multiply those and double, do you get 4z in? Yeah, I do. 2z doubles 4z. So that's why I have z and 2 added together squared. There's the correct factoring with that 9 out front. Okay? If you have questions on any of these, make sure you ask. Uh, another thing, 14, do you notice? That's a difference of squares pattern. All of the rest were perfect square trinomial patterns. So um, one more thing I ought to mention with the perfect square trinomial pattern. Let's take number, uh, let's take number 10. Suppose you forgot the pattern. Does that mean you're out of luck? Not necessarily. You could do it the way you learned in the last two lessons. So instead of having a shortcut, I would have to think, what times what gives me 25? Those same two numbers have to add up to negative 10. So uh, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25, and negative 5 plus negative 5 gives me negative 10. So my factoring would be that, which is going to get me the same thing that I had here. It's just going to take me longer. I don't know the shortcut. Okay, so it's nice to know these special cases. Final question, uh, or final things. We can use this technique now when we solve real life problems and we find that in my real life problem I have a difference of squares or a perfect square trinomial. So a bird picks up a golf ball and drops it while flying. The function represents the height of the golf ball t seconds after it's dropped. You can see here's the function. Okay, they wrote it out. The ball hits the top of a 32 foot tall pine tree. So that means y is 32. So let me plug that in. After how many seconds does the ball hit the, hit the t? I gotta find, I gotta find, or after how many seconds does the ball hit the tree? Um, I got to find t, okay? So first thing we need to do is get everything on one side, zero on the other. So let's take away the 32. And when I do that, I get 0 equals 49 minus 16t squared, which you see right here. Uh, do you notice 49 is a perfect square? 16t, let's quickly say it, 49, 7 and 7 is 49. 16t squared. Isn't 4t times itself 16t squared? And I have a subtraction. This is a difference of squares. So I can rewrite this right away as 7 and 4t, 7 and 4t, 1 being minus, 1 being plus. Okay, let's solve each. 7 minus 4t equals 0. Let's solve that. So take away the 7. And 4t would equal negative 7 and divide by 4. That's why they're getting t equals negative 7 fourths. So let's think. Can my time be negative? Mm, no. Okay, so we're going to throw that answer out. And then for the other, 7 minus 4t equals 0. Take away 7. Negative 4t equals negative 7. If I divide by negative 4, I get positive 7 fourths. So that would be one point, I'm doing it in my head right, 1.75 seconds. Looks like it took the ball 1.75 seconds to hit the tree. I'm going to stop the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask during class.